What's up guys, Eric Vasquez here from teachmetodesign.com and in today's video I'm going to be showing you guys a great tip for creating some customizable type in Adobe Illustrator. So today I'm going to be showing you guys how to create some cool custom type. Now the first thing that I want to do here is just grab a nice looking font. In this case I'm going to use a font called Montana. Now this font does cost a little bit. It's not expensive. I think it's maybe around 10 bucks or something. But you know you can find similar fonts like this for free on Defont or Font Squirrel. But I actually think you know it might be worth investing in a couple of nice fonts. Not something that you have to do on the regular but you know here and there it can be nice to have a more unique looking typeface like this one. One of the nice things about you know purchasing fonts is that oftentimes you will get more options. So for example if I come up to the window menu and I come down here to type and then glyphs you'll see that I actually have all of these alternate characters. Now a lot of free fonts don't usually have all of these options and again some of them can look kind of uh, stale or stagnant because Typically, you'll see people using them a lot of the time. But what I can do here is actually try a few different T's out, or a few different letters here for my text. And let's say, for example, I wanted to try a different looking G. I can just double click up here in the glyphs and choose that G. Or if I wanted to try a different looking C, I also have an option for that as well. So there's a couple of different options here that you have as far as you know your letters and your alphabet and everything like that, which is kind of nice. It allows you to experiment a little bit more with your text. So I'm just going to stick with this for right now, close out of my glyphs here, and you'll see compared to my standard issue of uh, this word here written out in Montana versus uh, this option. Now this one I think has a little bit more personality to it. We're going to go ahead and use that. So I'm just going to remove this one for now. But again, the purpose of this is to create customizable type, right? So no matter what font you're using, it's not really the lesson. The important thing is what I'm about to show you guys here. So the first thing I'm going to do is just hold down Alt and Shift and drag a copy down. And then we're going to come up to the window menu and choose Appearance. So before I do anything in the appearance panel, I just want to tell you guys a little bit about this. This basically allows you to set up a look, certain characteristics, certain qualities that you want your text to have. And the great thing about it is that it's totally reusable. Normally, if you were to create a logo, you might convert it to outlines, which is fine. But if you have to go back and change the text, you're not going to be able to do that. But by doing it this way, you will. So let me show you what I mean. First thing we're going to do here is select our type and we're going to choose none for the fill in stroke. Essentially, your type is going to disappear. And except for this copy up here that is, but this copy now just looks white, but you can tell there's something there. So over here in my appearance panel, I'm going to click on this second box in which says add new fill. And as soon as I do that, bam, the type shows up once again. Okay, but from here, we're going to now click on the first box which is add a new stroke. And once I do that, you'll see that a stroke has been added on top of the fill. Okay, it kind of looks like a layers palette where you can see the order of your styles here. So the next thing I'm going to do is drag the stroke down below my fill. And now when I click on it, I can change the weight of the stroke to somewhere around 5 or 6. And you'll see that that just makes my type look a whole lot more bold, right? It kind of gives it this really heavy feel. What I'm going to do is click on the color and let's go ahead and just change it to something like red or blue just something that that pops and stands out okay and from there we're gonna click on this little effects button and we're gonna come over here to where it says distort and transform and I'm gonna click on the option that says transform alright so once you do that you'll get this dialog box right and in this panel here where it says move let's just go ahead and type in one pixel horizontal, one pixel, vertical, and check off this little box that says preview. All right, maybe let's go a little bit more. Let's try two and two. Now you can see that it's transforming this by kind of offsetting it. So it's putting it to the right and down two points. All right, and then go ahead and hit OK. Now from here, what we're going to do is maybe decrease the 
wait a little bit from six points to say four. Or let's go with five just so that it kind of fills in some of the gaps there. All right, now again, select your type, come back down to add another stroke, and drag this one below your previous stroke. All right, I guess it doesn't matter because they'll both be exactly the same right now, but except for the transform part. Anyhow, we're going to click on this option here to change the color, choose a solid black, and now we'll come back to the effects option on the bottom and once again go to distort and transform. And this time we're going to offset this one maybe, let's say, six pixels and six pixels, six points rather. Either one really works. And now let's try and go a little bit further with this just to see what it looks like. Maybe let's put in 12 and 12. Okay, so here you can see there's a gap. You can see the white inside of these letters, which we don't really want to see. So down here where it says copies, let's just try and add a certain number of copies. Maybe not quite that many, but let's try something like that. And then maybe we can decrease this a little bit more. We'll go back to maybe three points three points, and let's decrease the copies to three. Okay, oops, I meant to do three points for the horizontal offset. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Now go ahead and hit okay once again. Now from here, you can kind of see where I'm going with this, but we now kind of have this um, nice 3D effect kind of going on. But what I can do is actually choose this stroke option here, and if I click this little arrow, you'll see that I can now control the opacity. So if I click on the opacity, I can drag this down and it kind of creates a nice looking shadow effect. So in case you don't want this kind of heavy dark shadow, you can also use it like this. All right, but for now, let's go ahead and just keep that bold. I just wanted to show that to you guys and maybe we'll play with that a little bit more as we continue. Okay, so moving along, I'm gonna click on this second box in to add yet another fill color. This time, let's go ahead and make it white and now come down to the effects option and choose path, offset path, and check off the preview box. And now let's go ahead and enter a negative value, say negative two pixels, something like that. And then go ahead and hit okay. And now we're going to select our top fill, the one that we just added, and we're gonna add one more fill to this. And we'll make this one black. Now again, come down to the effects option, and this time we're gonna choose path, offset path. Check preview, and enter the same value, make, make it negative two uh, points or negative two pixels. Okay, and now select that same fill, come back to effects, and choose distort and transform, transform. Now make sure to check off the preview box here, and then we're going to try offsetting it by maybe one pixel, and one pixel this way. And now you kind of see that we get this kind of highlight effect on top of our letters, which is actually pretty cool. But if you want it to be coming from the other side, you can just try a negative value for both of these instead of a positive value. Or you can play around with making one negative, one positive. Experiment a little bit here. Okay, but once you have something you like, go ahead and hit OK. So at this point, we kind of have some cool type going, but I want to modify um, this shape in the back, the, the kind of shadow part here. And I'm thinking that what I may do is transform it or maybe offset it a little bit more just to see what that looks like. So if I do four and four and check off preview, I may need to increase the number of copies as well. But I'm thinking the move, we may actually want to keep to a smaller distance. Let's go with two and four copies here. And now as far as the stroke, you can play around with the weight to get a different effect. Right? If I use a lesser weight, the blue line in between the black letters here is going to be reduced. Okay, so something like that looks pretty cool. And now for the fill, I actually want to invert this. So the black here, the first black fill and the third black fill or what's giving me this main black color here. So I'm actually going to change this to white, change my third fill to white, and then I'm gonna change the middle color, which was the original white color, to something else. Maybe we'll make it a darker shade of blue or orange, 
something else, just to experiment and play around. And if I click on this drop down arrow here, I'll be able to play around with the offset path a little bit more. So maybe I can try negative three points or three pixels, negative one, you just get a little bit more of that. And you can actually even enter um, decimal. So I could do you know, negative 2.5 negative 1.5 and just kind of play around until I get something that I like. I think that looks pretty good. And now I can turn on and off some of these layers and you can kind of see what's happening here. All right, and we also have this effect going on in the background. So again, I'm just going to, you know, play around with some of these options a little bit just to customize this text a little bit more until I get something that I'm happy with. Okay, so if I wanted to, I could actually add another outline in between these two, maybe make it white, to just add a little bit more thickness around the edges of the letters. So be mindful of you know the placement of your layers as well as whether it's a fill or a stroke. Okay, but you can see you can get some pretty cool and interesting looking results just by playing around with a few of these features here. Now let me show you guys one other thing. I'm just going to change this color one more time to maybe something a little bit different. Maybe let's go like that. Okay, so that's not looking too bad. And you can also turn the eyeballs on and off to kind of see what it looks like. If you may want to change some of these layers, you can see exactly which layer you've got selected. All right. And you can always change the options for any of these, the transform, the offset. If I wanted to transform this a little bit more, I could try negative two points and two points here and just make sure to check off your preview box to see what that looks like. All right, but you guys can get the idea here. You kind of see where I'm going with it and it looks pretty cool. Let's go ahead and hit OK. And now let's see for the stroke in the back, you may want to tweak some of these options a little bit more. What happens if I just do one copy here instead of four? Well, then it kind of flattens out a little bit. So we actually probably want to have at least three copies. And then we can try to modify those values a little bit until we get something that we like. Okay, so that creates a pretty nice effect for us right there. Okay, so the nice thing about this effect is that if I create a copy of it, I can actually come down, I can grab my text tool, and I can type in anything I want. So that's pretty nice because now I have all of these same effects applied to this instance of the copy here. So I can use this over and over again for any type that I want to use this on. Right? So if I wanted to try a different word and have it be exactly the same, I can just use the appearance panel. Whereas if I had created outlines for this, I would have to recreate the whole thing from scratch. So it's a really cool way to create some interesting looking effects in a fairly short amount of time. And it's something that you can reuse and you can actually save. If I come over here to my panel and I choose graphic styles, grab this text, and then come down here on the bottom of that panel to where it says new graphic style. And I can actually add that as a preset. So all I would have to do is, you know, the next time that I opened up an Illustrator document is load up this graphic style. If I just save this as a file, I'll be able to load this up and it will recall all of my graphic styles. So all you have to do to do that is to come up here to these arrows on the top right and choose save graphic style library. And then you can just say graphic style, let's call it custom graphic style, all right, save it. And now if I literally, if I close this document, don't save it, just start a new one. Now I'm going to start a new file. I can come back up here to this menu, choose open graphic style library, other library, 
navigate to my desktop and choose this custom graphic style.ai file. Now you'll see when this panel opens up that I have that exact same appearance or graphic style that I created in my previous document. So let's say I just wanted to apply this to something else. It doesn't even have to be the same font, but you'll literally get the same exact effects and everything that you had in your appearance panel. Like that. Okay, and if you just want to be sure, you can come up to Window, choose Appearance, and you'll see all those effects that we just saved and created. So this is a really cool way and very efficient way to start designing, especially if you're into creating logos or just, you know, some cool typography. Um, this is a, a really big time saver and it's a very useful skill to know how to use in Adobe Illustrator. Um, if you guys are interested in, you know, things like logo design and branding, um, definitely check out our all new brand new course. Head on over to teachmetodesign.com slash brand new to find out more about the brand new course. I'm basically going to take you guys through my entire process, not only for creating three different logos, but for developing an entire brand identity from start to finish. So it's a really cool process that I'm going to be taking you guys through, uh, sharing a lot of my own techniques that I've learned over the years, and you know, just kind of having fun. I'm showing you guys how to do a lot of things in this course. I'm going to be showing you guys how to create patterns, you know, icons and graphics from scratch. Um, we're going to be creating a complete brand style guide, um, which basically serves as, you know, your rule book so that anytime you are handing off your assets to someone else, um, they'll basically know, you know, what they can and cannot do with your brand. All right. Cause the last thing you want is for your brand to be all over the place and be, you know, completely inconsistent because that's just going to be confusing, right? And it's not going to look very good. It doesn't look professional. Um, so it's important to think about, you know, the way that your stuff is, is perceived. It's about, you know, showing that you can do good work and showing um, that you know how to do this for clients. All right. And that's all part of, um, you know, my mission here is to help you guys to be successful graphic designers and how to make money in the industry and making logos and brands are one of the best ways that you can do that. So, uh, the amount of stuff that you guys are going to be getting in this course, I mean, is uh, really great value. It's 24 modules, um, over 10 hours of design training. I think it's like 12 and a half hours altogether. Um, but it's really going to teach you guys a lot. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, I definitely recommend checking that out. Head on over and take a look. I hope that you guys found this to be a helpful tutorial. Hopefully you learned some new techniques along the way. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you for your support, and we'll see you next time.